Whereas what we would call reincarnation, changing the channel, saying, I think I'm going to try another channel here for a different flavor. Uh, you know, that's what, at one time there was a little boy who, uh, maybe he was like nine or ten years old, and I, I was visiting him, and his mom was into the metaphysics of the course, and he was sitting on a couch with me, and he's, you know, how they're very blunt children, or I love how frank and blunt they are. He sat down with me in the corner, and he just looked at me, and he said, my mom believes in reincarnation. Is it so? You know, just very direct. So I took a remote control. I said, well, it's really more like changing channels. Um, as long as we believe we can find something in time and space, we keep just trying another channel. I said, here. And I said, I threw the remote control to him, and I said, you're an eternal spirit. All is perfect oneness. But you feel there might be something more. So you come and try out the dream of the world. He said, turn the remote, turn the TV on. <laughs> so he turns it on and he said, now let's, you have the capability of switching channels. And he said, okay, and I said, your mom would call those lifetimes. They're really just like channels. They're really no different. None is, one is different from the rest. I said, so let's try it out. So he was quite curious. He's flipping through and I say, now look, you're a little girl there, and da, 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 da. now you're a man. Now you're a woman. And, you know, it would just be, he would flip the channel and say, it, your mom would say you're incarnating and coming into the, the dream, but really, you're just flipping the channel. Um, you, you believe you can find something in time and space. And eventually, he said, okay, all right, you know how kids get, you know, okay, all right, now how do I, get out of this, you know, and, and it was like, well, you just have to have one last experience where you see that you're, you're the whole screen, you're everything on the screen, you're not a character, you're the entire, you're the whole screen, you're the entire screen. So he said, okay, to give it one more try, and he did it, and it was, it was a priest in a, uh, in a church, and I'm like, oh, a religious figure, but, Remember, you're the, you're the stained glass windows, you're the pews, you're the aisle, you're everything. You now are so expansive, you are everything on the screen. And now you can turn it off. And he turned it off. So, there is no motive to kind of get out of the body. That would not be a, a good motive at all. Because as Armel said the other day, you, you can't get out of one unless you believe you're in one. And that's part of the mesmerism of the world, to think that we've taken our spirit and shrunk it down into a little slab of flesh, that's a trick. <laughs> that's, how do you get a vast spirit into a little slab of flesh? That's a pretty good trick. But there is a sense that once your mind becomes so unified and so still, like our mouth's talking about, that even, Jesus will say, our use for words is almost over now. He says that in the workbook. And he has a beautiful line in there, because a lot of times we think about those, those that have like hung around for a long time, like Mandela or Gandhi, or you know, the ones that lived to be a ripe old age, and they just were teaching peace for a lot of decades. We, you know, oh, that's really good. There's a line in the Course where Jesus said, says, uh, there are those who, who have laid the body aside completely, and it also goes on to say that, that um, because that is part of a greater use, it, there's a greater helpfulness actually in laying the body and the world aside. And you see how that contradicts all of the beliefs on earth. You know, it's, it's more heroic if you hang around and keep teaching love and peace. But he says there are those that have laid it by Side the body to increase their helpfulness. And you see from heaven's perspective, it's totally, everything's inverted. What? They've laid aside their body to increase their helpfulness. Well, they've got no lips anymore, no, no arms to hug with. How, how are they going to, we think of all those things as helpful on earth, but in the end, we're being called to remember our true identity, and so you see, just that line in there gives you 
a little glimmer that, that there's something even more helpful than having a body. And it's, it's really remembering your true identity. And that's what we're called to.